Bam. What's your linebacker? Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Perfect. Quarterback. Excellent. Got you guys. Got it. All right, boys. We're going to make the pick. Happy? Yeah. Here we go. Let's roll. Hello. Zavin. Steve Kime. Steve, how's it going? Good, man. You got some dogs in the background? What do you got going on there? Steve, how's it, how's it going? Stop, stop, stop. I didn't tell you I was picking you yet, man. Tell him to calm down a little bit. Oh, my God. <laughs> All my family's here. You ready to roll? Steve, we're going to kill everyone. <laughs> we're going to kill everyone. <laughs> I like it. I like it, man. Keep that mentality. And we're going to get a Super Bowl <laughs> ring so big on our on our fingers that a show dog wouldn't be able to jump over. I love it, man. I love it. Well, good. We'll keep that attitude. Keep that chip on your shoulder. So uh, I'm going to allow you to um, enjoy the time with your family, man. I, I want you to talk to uh, Michael Bidwar, owner, and uh, Coach Kingsbury as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You got it. Hey, listen, I'm going to put you on with Coach, all right? All right. And then uh, and then Michael Bidwar, owner, OK? All right, I got you. I got you. I got you. All right, man. Hey, listen, congratulations. Thank you so much. OK. Talk to you soon, buddy. Zavin. Zavin. Yes. Hey, it's Coach Kingsbury. What's happening, man? How's it going? How's it going? I'm, I'm good. Probably not as good as you, though. Congrats. Man. We are, uh, we're fired up. Man. Get ready to come in and, and get going too. There ain't no red shirt, all right? No, there's no red shirt, and we're gonna go in there and we're gonna kill it, brother. <laughs> it's your time, brother. Congrats, man. We're fired up. I'm gonna hand you to our owner, Michael Bidwell. Zavin, Michael Bidwell, congratulations. We're so excited to make you a cardinal. You're in Tulsa, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we're we're gonna come out and see you and pick you up tomorrow. All right. So you enjoy the day. Enjoy the moment with your family. Okay. 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 Enjoy so it. Much, All right. Bro. We're going to put your name in now. Thank okay. You so Thanks. Much. You're welcome. Thank you. Enjoy it. <laughs> Woo. That was emotional. <laughs> Holy cow. Congrats, Doug. <laughs> Thomas Dimitrov, uh, you made a lot of those calls uh, in over a decade as general manager of the Atlanta Falcons. I know that brings back a lot of memories, man. I mean, I don't know how much better it gets than the guy telling the GM, we're going to kill everybody. Like, we, I mean, like, that's what you want to hear, I imagine, when you're calling your first-round pick. I mean, I, I'd love to know what was your favorite that call that comes to mind when you called a kid and it just... You know, you just heard exactly what you wanted to hear. I just confirmed, like, yeah, we made the right call. You know, it's funny because you get a number of those. And, you know, 13 years in this, there were a lot of them, of course. And, you know, there's so many that stick out, so many really emotional ones like that. Literally, when you guys were showing that, Michael, like, I was tearing up. Um, it's amazing because I think about that and I think about this is the first time in 30 years that I haven't been in a draft room, and it makes even that much more emotional for me, um, you know, to talk about it um, without being overly melodramatic here. Um, 
But to be lighter, to kind of get me back in the right spot, Matt Ryan, the very first one I ever made, uh, very first one, I uh, was so excited about getting him on the phone, and I forgot to tell him that that we we're we we're drafting him. So, um, you know, here we go that many years later. But, look, there's so many emotional ones, brother, that that's what makes this sport and, and professional sports and the bond that we have, I – it makes it so special. And you have people at times when I hear players say it's all business with these guys. What I want you to know, and what everyone else should know is there is so much emotion that goes into it. Not every, every single player all the time, but the heart and soul goes into it with these guys that are at the helm, the team builders. They really do. They're not just a bunch of cold SOBs far from that. At least in today's world, I can tell you all, there's a lot of really, really sort of, really aggressive uh, yet sensitive people in these positions that really want the best for these players. They want the best for, for their families. And, and it showed there. So you, you talk about Thomas, you know, the first time in 30 years, not being in a draft room, that gives you some insight. Those 30 years being inside gives you insight. And then on the outside looking in, there's a different kind of insight. And what was that like for you yesterday in this uh, unusual position? Yeah, you're exactly right, Michael. I mean, that's a lot of years. I sat back and I and I was on my sofa and I was watching, you know, the, the production with the Kings of Leon and leading in. I, I don't normally recognize how big this draft has gotten from that standpoint. But what it really allowed me to do was take a deep breath. Instead of being myopically focused on the Atlanta Falcons, I was focused on the entire league as they came up. And I put my GM hat as much as possible on for each team that came up to pick wondering what they would do, how I'd be responding to the scenarios and such. I think this is a great kickoff to my my year or two, who knows how long, of learning and growing and, and you know, this contemplative work that I'm talking about, becoming even better as a leader and as a general manager, being able to really dig into multiple organizations and hopefully multiple leagues and, and really analyze uh, the minutia of putting together an organization. You know, Thomas, I got to commend you on, on your transparency. Not that I expect anything else. I mean, that's just, that's, you're always, you know, your authentic self. Um, but that really, that resonated with me, man, because you and I have talked about this off camera. Look, this brother from another, we keep it a buck. You're a, you're a brother from another to us. We've talked about off camera that we have similar experiences in terms of inflection points and transitions in our careers. And I just know... And if I could bring it to myself just for a second for purposes of this next question, I just know, you know, when things didn't end well for me at one point, I had to pull back from anything that reminded me of the routine that I had lost. Like I had to literally pull back from watching sports at a certain point because all it would do is trigger, you know, emotions and remind me that I'm not doing that anymore. Was that a part of you that maybe at first was reluctant to even you know, engage in this process as an outsider, or even yesterday, like just sitting back and watching it, there had to be some conflicting emotions. I wonder if there was a part of you that was ever questioning whether or not it was it was good for you to actually watch the draft so soon after you had been in those rooms. You understand what I'm saying? Like, just had to be yeah, a complete, completely do, right? completely do, and, and and it's a really, really, really good storyline and and discussion point because. Let's quickly go back to when I got fired. That next weekend, I was in Boulder. You and I, we had talked. I was in Boulder, and I was walking around a trail with my fiance Mimi, and we were, we were so distanced from the NFL, and that's all I wanted to be up in the mountains, high elevation. And just as you would know it, there was a group of three or four guys coming on the path just around the other corner, and they were talking about Julio Jones and the Atlanta Falcons. And they looked up at me. We had our masks off, and they're like, you got to be kidding me. And there was this weird fan interaction. And I thought, I can't get away from it at 8,500 feet. Are you kidding me? So lead into now, I, I, I just thought, if I can't get away from it there, I just have to let it go and let it come as it may, not fight it. There may be some days I want to be in it. Some days I may be completely agitated by it and I stay away. It's kind of like that, you know, that a piece of driftwood, right? That, that just let myself go and, and, and go as it, as it comes so that I don't, fight myself to a point of agitation. It's really, really important as I'm, as I'm evolving in all of this and trying to get to the spot I want to get mentally. And I think that's only going to help me in, in the future. Um, I love the sport. I love everything to do with it. 
But again, the emotions that you just brought up by watching that, you know, Steve Kime and, and crew, uh, it really, really touched me at a spot where I remember why I love the sport. So, awesome, it, and that's a great answer. You know, and you think about it, uh, Thomas, you said you were putting that GM's hat on for each of the franchises. So you got the first three picks. Now here you are, that team, you got to stop yourself from, from saying us, <laughs> the Atlanta Falcons at number four. What do you do? Because you have so much inside knowledge about what their roster is and what that city is and what the ownership is, like everything. You know so much, but then you're outside saying, okay, what do you do? What were your thoughts as Atlanta was on the clock and then ultimately making a selection? Look, Michael, I, I, I have a good working, uh, friendly relationship with Terry Fontenot, and I've told you guys before, I believe, I want the best for them. I want the best for the organization. That may be an anomalous approach. A lot of people are angry, and they want people to, you know, an organizations to plummet after they've been terminated, but that's not where I am. I've invested way too much my heart and soul into this organization. Again, this wasn't two, three, or four years this was 13 years of my soul, and, and so I want the most of it. Again, not to be melodramatic about it. When I look at this and I look at what, what went down, you know, at that pick, I realized that, you know, this was a this was an organizational move and a very important move with the confirmation that Matt Ryan is is the guy they believe in. Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot believe they can grow and, and continue to build this team into being a Super Bowl caliber franchise. Matt Ryan, I've said this all along, even though I believed it was responsible of the organization to consider a quarterback that would be waiting in the wings while Matt, I truly believe, could win a Super Bowl, again, as long as there's the right play calling and as long as there's the right system fit for him, that they could, and this, this young quarterback could be waiting. I, I thought it was ideal. When, at, at least in my mind, I'm sure there were a lot of questions here in Atlanta when that quarterback wasn't picked at the fourth pick and it was a tight end, albeit a very, very talented tight end, in my mind, I just started wondering, was there a quarterback they would have taken if he would have fallen to that spot or not? The reality is they got themselves a really good football player. Can you imagine that team? If they can get the situation, the dusty situation fixed up right now with Julio Jones, you have Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, you have Kyle Pitts. You have Hayden Hurst, who's a, another fantastic athlete at the tight end spot. You have the receiver group with Ridley, of course, and, and Julio, as I mentioned. Get yourself a, a running back here in the second round or third round and continue to build that O-line like you can. And there's some good players on that O-line. This could be a prolific offense from get-go for Arthur Smith. Yeah, thank you for that. That's... Uh... Trying to remind Michael Holly that the draft is more than one round. He forgets that from time to time, Thomas. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> this, this, nice. It's not just nice. I had, nice to bring, shot. I had to bring that back. Yeah, keep your, going. You keep yeah, going. What was your? That's uh, <laughs> what was your? Uh, what was your? And I know you got a lot of friends and a lot of respect for a lot of different organizations, but I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you: What was your favorite pick from round one? I had two two favorite picks and two favorite moves, and and I really really loved what Chicago did, given the situation, to move up and and get a player who I think is a really good football player with talent coming out of his ears at so many levels, the requisite traits at a lot of levels. You know, there's there's a lot of talk out there. I mean, you know where where he was, and to be able to come up as an organization, you know, led by Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, two guys that I have a great deal of respect for who think very, very soundly. People aren't always going to agree with people. People are on the hot seat. Again, I've been on the hot seat almost forever in Atlanta. That's just how it was. There are two men right there in, in Chicago who know they need to hit it strong and hit it fast in Chicago. And the best way to do that was to get a, get a quarterback that they knew that they could grow with and they could grow with now. That said, you also heard Matt Nagy comment about, you know, the comparison to how he did it and how they did it in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes taking, what, 16 or 17 games before he even started. They like the idea that they have someone in place there. I really liked what they did. Aggressive, went for it, understood, you know, understood what it was in the NFL now. You can't sit and hope that you'll take care of business later on. Got to go after what you want. Okay, X Games, go big or go home. I believe they did that, and I think they're not going home. They're going to be playing some good football in the in the future. And what was that other pick? You said two of them. So it what was, was the other one. Chicago, what was the other one? 
Well, I really, I really like what the Jets did. Joe Douglas and, and Robert Sala. You know, I, I love what they did, obviously, at the first pick. But I love what they also did coming back right away, you know, to, to come up to the 14th pick for, for Vera Tucker to get an offensive line mayor, lineman there was really important. We did that, I remember, way back. When we drafted Matt Ryan, we decided we were coming away with an offensive tackle. We knew that we were going to move up a little higher. Sam Baker was that pick. We moved up, probably should have been taken in the, in the early part of the second round. We were, we were going to confirm to everyone that we were building this around Matt Ryan. I think they did similar things there in Jetland to move up. Could they have waited a little bit? Maybe. What would they have gotten if they would have stayed put in the 20s? Who knows? The reality is they got a really good football player with versatility, can play tackle and guard, and will help this new regime really start to build. Hey, and oh, by the way, isn't it pretty important and interesting that you have a defensive coordinator by trade? I had both of those, Mike Smith and, and uh, Dan Quinn. Those guys really, really want the quarterback in place because they know as D coordinators how important it is, how tough it is to defend a really good quarterback. Mike, you sense this theme here with Thomas? He likes aggressive moves. He likes, he likes guys love moving it. up. He loves to see teams move up and go, go get your guy. <laughs> go get it. As, as you said the other day, you said, look, you got to be aggressive in, in your field, whether it's being a general manager or media. Just go get it. This was an interesting draft because from a trade standpoint, gents, I mean, I usually look at them. I have two or three that I like, a couple I don't like. I was really impressed, again, stepping back with every one of these, these trades. I thought on both sides, they were win-win. This comes back to what I've, I've talked about recently. To get deals done in the league, you have to have good communicative relationships. You don't have to kiss anyone's butt. You have to have relationships where there's trust. Otherwise, people aren't doing business with you. And I believe there's some really good business done with foresight, not only the teams that moved up, but the teams that moved back. And again, I was impressed with how things were navigated this year. Uh, my, my final question for you, Thomas, uh, involves, and you want to talk about going back in time. I can remember sitting next to you in a scouting room in 2002, 2003, and this is before the 03 draft, and one of those draft picks was Asante Samuel. And I remember you discussing Asante Samuel. And then I remember Asante Samuel playing for you in Atlanta. And now here we are on day two. Asante Samuel Jr. is available in round two. I mean, it's just it's crazy how yeah, just that, the cycle. I mean, well, what a cycle. But is, is he a guy that you think a team should really be aggressive and, 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 and go and, and acquire him? And if not him, let's give us a couple other players that you see now in round two who are, who are getting your attention. Well, look, I, on Asante Samuel Jr., there is no question he is. He, he could have gone in the first round. The back end of the first round would have been a really sweet spot for him. There'll be a lot of teams that are salivating with, you know, thinking that, that he's in, within reach, hoping. And I think it's worthwhile to think at that point, again, back to trading up, which I, which I do appreciate. If there's a team back 15 or 10 that really need a corner, that's a really good place to jump up there, deal something a little bit later in the draft, and go after the guy you want again. Do not sit back on your hands. This is an interesting draft. There are some really good football players, but let's spin this back around. Someone asked me on a recent interview, who would you have sold the farm for like you sold for Julio? And there is no one in this draft that I would have done that for. No disrespect to anyone. I don't know if there's been many people in the past that I would have done that. For me, that was a once in a career move. You know, we start talking about what, you know, back to Asante, but there are a lot of really good football players like Asante. They may not have all the measurement measurables, excuse me, but really step up and be a good football players in this league. Uh, that will be fun to watch. Hey, man, it's been fun uh, talking to you this week, man. We appreciate you. Uh, I always appreciate your great. transparency, your vulnerability, your honesty. Um, and we'll enjoy your company while we got it because uh, you'll be back in draft rooms uh, before you know it. So. Enjoy this little sabbatical while you can. Nothing but love for you guys. I appreciate you more than you know. All right. Likewise. Appreciate you, bro. Take Same care. Same thing. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Enjoy Let's the guys. draft tonight. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.